who were the sons of God, the daughters of men, and the Nephilim in Genesis 6, 4. Think about this deeply, and let's go deeper. Since it's part of the context of eight verses, namely 1 to 8, let's have a look. Verse 1 tells us the story is about man increasing in the earth. Verse 2 is an obscure verse that distinguished the sons of God with daughters of men. However, we're not told here who they were. In verse 3, God speaking, saying that his spirit will no longer abide in man forever, and his days is marked to 120 years. That's in the English Standard Version, ESV. In the King James Version, KJV, it's rendered that God will not longer strive with man. Then we turn to verse 4, which is the main verse in question. In the ESV, it says there were the Nephilim, but afterward, we're told the sons of God came to the daughters of man and bore children. It also says they were mighty men of old in ESV by nearest antecedent rule. The children were the mighty men in this translation. KJV rendered similarly, except they interpreted Nephilim as giants. But the idea stays the same. After that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, or Egbrim, the same became mighty men. Their children, that is, Note that, or Egbrim, mighty, was later applied to Nimrod in Genesis 6-9. Or Gibur. Then in verse 5, we're told God saw the wickedness of man. And so in verse 6, Yahweh regretted in ESV, repented in KJV, that he had made him. Thus, in verse 7, Yahweh pronounced judgment to blot him and other creatures out, except for Noah, whom he found favor with verse 8. As you can see, despite verses 2 and 4 being unclear, the entire context has everything to do about man increasing in number, but becoming wicked. Obscure as they are, these verses neither say the Nephilim nor the sons of God were angels. Nephilim ruled out of the equation, and even if we grant Nephilim, we're giants. See number 13, verse 33. Anak's sons of were described as huge. None of these verses say the giants were children of angels. They even contradict the idea. Both translations tell us that when the sons of God came to the daughters of men, there were already the Nephilim, or giants. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, but still who were the sons of God. Why were they distinguished from the daughters of men? The sons of God were men. In the larger context, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the title Sons of God was used again in Deuteronomy 32-8, applying it to man, not to angels. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when He divided mankind, He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the Sons of God. But the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted heritage, Deuteronomy 32, 8 to 9. I hate to be anticlimactic in the interpretation of this narrative. I am sure there are those who wanted this to be something as mythical as extra biblical stories of celestial beings marrying women and giving birth to giants. But if we let the scripture speak for itself, it would turn out that the sons of God in Genesis 6, 2-6, were men just as the sons of God in Deuteronomy 32, 
8 to 9 were. They were men like Adam, while the daughters of men were simply women, and Moses was just demythologizing the pagan legends. Also, son of is used in the Bible to describe the similar characteristics, image, between the parent and progeny. In this case, between God, the parent, and man, son, when God created man in Genesis 1, 26, the man was said to create it in God's image, Genesis 1, 27. Another characteristic they share is the knowledge of good and evil. See Genesis 3, 5. Therefore, man is technically a son of God. And that is pretty much explicitly established in Genesis 5, 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Genesis 5, verse 1 in ESV, sadly, as they increase in number, they became more wicked, and that image being greatly marred by sin, they took many wives as they chose Genesis 6, verse 2. Jesus ruled out angels procreate. Besides, didn't Jesus say angels don't marry? How can they have children? Read Matthew 22 verse 30. Speaking of the last day when God's people are resurrected, he likened them to angels who do not give into marriage. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Matthew 22, 30 KJV. See also Mark 12, 25. Peter and Jude both ruled out the idea of rebel angels roaming around or that they have become demon gods in 2 Peter 2, 4. Peter wrote the angels were cast into Tartarus and that they are kept there until judgment. This is affirmed in Jude 1, 6 which says the angels who left their place are kept in eternal chains until judgment. They can't be just roaming around. And guess who will judge them? Read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to get notifications whenever we post our upcoming videos in the days to come. See you around. Shalom.